Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So in interestingly, during dog fights, the rate of turn is not important. But now I will show you sustained turn. Okay. So now you see the difference. So you see that's why you want to be behind and above. Instantaneous turn to avoid. Sometimes Hollywood teaches you more aeronautics than in the classroom. So here for example I could see that the speed came down, the speed reduced. So during air shows you see a lot of instantaneous turns when you are trying to impress the audience about the capability. But it is important for you to be able to maintain it. It's only for show purpose. Uh, the real uh, capability is only when you are able to maintain that particular turn rate and uh, height as well as velocity. Okay, so some students have sent me a message saying, can we compare some aircraft uh, which we have along with the ones that our enemies have? So this is a good example. We will look at the turning performance of these two aircraft. So what do you think? Offhand, what do you think? As far as turning performance is concerned, do you think our aircraft Tejas is better than F-16? <clears throat> Let us see the numbers, okay. We cannot just go by emotions, okay. Just because it is made in India, you cannot say it should be better. Let us see the numbers. So here are the two aircraft, okay. Let us see. So here is the graph. Now the source of this graph is not a very authentic source, so therefore I do not want to say that this is perfectly correct. I have not confirmed these numbers, I do not have the data with me. But if you look at the graph, there are two types of F-16 aircraft. There is the uh, F-16AB which is the previous generation of F-16 and then there is F-16C and D which are the modified version. So obviously the ones which are modified are slightly better, they are more capable. So the orange, the orange or the yellow line that you see, the dark line is for the F-16 CD turn rate. So this is the modified F-16. The blue line that you see is for the LCA and the red line is for the previous version of F-16 that is F-16 AB. So what do we notice? We notice that if you look at Mach numbers up to approximately 0 0.65, 0 0.65 mark number, the blue line is above the red line. So that means the blue line is having a higher values of uh, turn rate or higher values of G compared to the red one. Below 0 0.6, the F-16 AB seems to be better, having an advantage. But compared to F-16 C and D, we are consistently better at all Mach numbers right from 0.3 to 1, F-16 is inferior compared to Tejas. This is for the sea level sustained horizontal turn at empty weight and no after burner. Now 
on the right hand side you have a scale that shows you the turn rate so read that axis when you are looking at the dark line the dotted line shows for the g's pulled that you should see on the left hand side so you can notice that the place where we become superior the g's pulled are much higher we are able to pull approximately 6g at mark number 1 as compared to only 4.8 or 5 all right so the parameters of the aircraft that make a big difference are wing loading so we have a lower wing loading 247 kg per meter square as compared to 431 for f16c so lesser the wing loading higher is the instantaneous turn rate so as far as itr is concerned which gives you the initial advantage of getting into a dog fight we are far superior in fact our wing loading is almost double almost half okay let's look at now the sustained horizontal turn rate this is more important right sustained turn rate so for sustained turn rate we have some data f16a we have some data in that data we are seeing the turn rate versus the mark number and the same data which we saw last time we just superimpose there so the lca outperforms f16 av at high mark numbers beyond 0.65 and all mark numbers for f16 c and d so thrust to weight ratio is better for f16 slightly better but that doesn't that's not the whole story so the sustained turn rate of f16 is more than tejas at lower mark numbers but beyond 0.65 mark numbers our aircraft dominates and interestingly most dog fights take place only at mark numbers beyond 0.65 approximately at transonic mark numbers normally so at mark number less than 0.65 both are equal roughly equal above that our aircraft is far superior but remember one thing you cannot take this and say therefore it will always win because winning in a war or winning in the combat is a function of pilot skill it's a function of the initial positions and also on the actual aircraft specs so if you look purely from the aircraft point of view if you remove the pilot from the equation and if you remove some advantages which may be there because of the initial engagement then our aircraft is superior so it all depends now if our pilots are also superior then they have a superior aircraft with better skills they will always win okay the last thing that we discuss about turning flight is turning in a vertical plane now in the vertical plane basically it's only for not for transports okay it's meant only for aerobatic and commuter aircraft and also they also only when they indulge in some maneuvers so let's see some maneuvers this is a vertical climb almost vertical perfectly vertical in fact now inverted so it is only for these kind of situations that we are going to now look at vertical flight and obviously during take off and landing you need to do this every aircraft does it although not so dramatically but you need to actually go into a vertical plane turn when you go for a take off so there are many positions which the aircraft can be let's say in the bottom of the turn you will have thrust in the forward direction weight below lift up so in this t will be equal to d because you are horizontal but lift will be equal to weight okay lift minus w sorry so the excess lift l minus w will be equal to the force required to go into a vertical path that is wv square by gr 
when you move to this condition now your nose is pointing vertically upwards so now thrust will be equal to weight if you want to go vertically up but you are into a turn so there is a lift force which is trying to make you go inside the circle correct so here t minus d will be equal to w and l will be equal to w v square by gr here now you are inverted so again horizontal so t equal to d so t minus d equal to 0 but l plus w both will give you the acceleration and therefore you come inside so now if this is the case what happens at the final position or in the what is called as the 3 o'clock position so here the t minus d plus w is 0 which means t plus w thrust and weight equal to drag and lift will be equal to the centrifugal force so you can see the lift keeps on changing the thrust keeps on changing so to to fly in this particular condition continuously at a constant speed is not very easy you need a coordination between the throttle and also the control surfaces okay so in general if there is an angle you can use this formula for angle so cos gamma will go from 0 to 360 okay so what is a pull up maneuver pull up maneuver basically is a maneuver in which you pull yourself up from a horizontal flight this is a dive pull up going to a dive and then pull up this is a dive pull up So you are on a curved path and your altitude is continuously increasing from the horizontal you are going towards that side. Okay. So the forces can be balanced, the force acting would be lift minus weight and that will be equal to mv square by r, it is like the turning flight. So the same formula only thing is the plane has now changed from horizontal to vertical. The formulae are the same if you replace the aircraft with a point mass whether you draw a circle like this or you draw a circle like this it is the same okay. So let us see one more short video about a dive pull out. This is a pull out. Although this is inclined, so it's not a normal pull out. It's an inclined pull out. So dive pull out is a part of descending flight. So the angle of attack is going to decrease and the speed is going to increase because they are related you know. 